The role of Cambridge's Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department, CB uh, as we call it, is to undertake the very highest international levels of research, also to undertake internationally leading education at both the undergraduate and postgraduate level. And the third strand of it is really that we want to have a beneficial effect uh, on society. Chemical engineering and biotechnology has a diversity in its skill set. We follow things from the molecule right through to a whole process, as the name suggests. Well, this is a great new building. It's the first time that the whole department has been located on one site, and it's been designed specifically for interaction and collaboration. The research laboratories are also arranged that it's very easy for researchers to break out. That provides a really nice environment. Doing excellent science is not negotiable. We also have that entrepreneurial spirit which makes us want to apply our science and see how it can be of advantage to society. We have a, a general open door policy to encourage industry to come and talk to us and bring us their challenges because we want to be challenged. One of the big problems in providing affordable, rapid diagnostic tests um, in low resource areas is the problem of price product parity. So we're trying to use synthetic biology to circumvent that classical manufacturing value chain and develop a technology that would allow for the production of the expensive portion of the test, the biosensor, in country. We have to start off with first um, designing synthetic DNA, foreign DNA, that we then insert into E. coli cells and then from that uh, we get them to produce a protein that turns the culture pink. We take that lysate and we mix it with some silica that we've extracted from sand and at the end we have now a clear solution with pink silica at the bottom. Because we want to make sure that the enzyme is having a good interaction with our sample we move the silica through the sample in our hourglass-like format and that allows us to control the position of the particles as well as the mixing can take that and use it to detect things like malaria for our collaborations that we're working with in Africa and for leptospirosis which is an infectious disease prevalent in Malaysia. The diagnosis of bipolar disorder is a massive problem that affects millions of people. When bipolar patients come in to their doctors and they're feeling depressed, there can be no way for the doctor to know that they have bipolar disorder as opposed to regular depression. We're launching a trial to try and solve that diagnosis by creating a diagnostic aid for bipolar disorder. First, participants are going to answer a series of online questions. Second, some of the participants are going to submit a blood spot sample to the lab. And third, further funneling down, some of those participants are going to receive a psychiatric clinical interview. So for this study, um, we'll be using dried blood spots. Once we get those dried blood spots, we'll be looking at the proteins in there. So the proteome is all the proteins that are in your blood. When we're analyzing these blood spots, this is really where the really heavy machinery comes in. We're doing that by mass spectrometry we see if we can match up what people with different disease states, what's in their blood, and then from that we can try and look specifically for the major targets that we've identified. The statisticians try and synthesize all this data and bring it together into an algorithm that we can use when someone with bipolar disorder comes into their doctor, we're able to correctly identify those people. The Molecular Neuroscience Group and the Laser Analytics Group work closely together and we study neurodegeneration using optical techniques. In diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and Huntington's disease, there are proteins that misfold and aggregate. We want to study um, how this happens, but we also want to understand where we can target along this pathway uh, with drugs to prevent Alzheimer's disease. We've developed a fluorescence screening platform and this uses the model organism C. elegans. In Alzheimer's disease there is a protein called amyloid beta. When we overexpress this, this prevents them from wiggling as much. So we use green fluorescent protein tagged to the amyloid beta. Our screening platform images the fluorescence lifetime of each of the worms and when we feed them small molecule inhibitors which prevents the aggregation of the protein we can see whether there's a difference in the fluorescence lifetime. There isn't such a platform that can screen in whole model organisms this quickly so hopefully we'll find a potential target that can go on into clinical trials. 
This department is really great because it's so diverse. Our group has collaborations within the department which wouldn't have happened if there wasn't the diversity here. There's a great collaborative nature here. There's a lot of different research going on and there's a lot of overlapping projects. That combination of people that are at the best in their fields in the world is pretty incredible. In just eight months, we've seen an enormous difference in our capabilities just by having people in this one building. The vision that we have going forward is that we're going to be top of the league. It seems that we have all of the resources and all of the people that should allow that to happen.